Put on a great case to be a first-team all-conference player. And here in the conference standings, Wanda, Campbell with a win earns the two-seed. Asheville a chance to bump themselves up above Radford and avoid a play-in game here this week. Still a lot at stake. Still a lot to be gained from a victory in a game tonight. Do you like your steaks medium rare? you like them well done? How do you like a steak? I love them well done. I love a good ball game here. We've got <laughs> Asheville and Campbell getting ready to sizzle up on the court. Our lead referee, Timothy Bryant, tip things off. And Kai Carter and Laura McNamara-Clement will get us underway here in the final game of the regular season. Asheville basketball to start this first quarter. UNC Asheville in the first quarter yesterday scored four points on just two made baskets, something they have to work on tonight. I'm sure their, their goal is to go into this game and be much more effective from the onset as we see them go inside and score quickly. That's Amira Corpening with the first points of the night. You figured the energy would shift for Honey Brown's club after what she called her worst offensive performance of the year. And early on, Asheville with the first bucket. Coach Brown, such a competitor, like Coach Fisher, two competitive great coaches out on the on the floor tonight. These two have been against each other for seven years in the Big South. Honey is an assistant under Brenna Mockrick Patrick as Tatiana Carver comes up short on the three. Campbell in that first half yesterday also shot the ball well, 64% in the first half. Yeah, they they really, really did and ended shooting almost 50% for the game. This starting five includes Nadiria Evans, number double zero, the best scorer in this league at 18 a game. Yesterday, however, just two points. Yeah, it was definitely a big plus for the Camels in the game that Nadiria Evans got into early foul trouble. Nearly a three for Kai Carter that time. As the Campbell starting five, same as yesterday, led by the double-double presence of McNamara Clement in the post. She really ate up some young freshmen down low, including Abigail Wilson. Very effective, only missing three shots in the game, I believe. There's her first miss tonight. Already an enthused energy from this Bulldog club trying to get a 10th conference win and match last year's total in the win column where they earned a number six seed. Well, you know, whether you win or you lose, you got to get up and be ready to play the next day. If you're Campbell, how do you avoid complacency after a dominant 30-point win? Well, you just got to harp on the consistency factor and particularly going into tournament time, how important it is to play well night in and night out. Evans, an air ball at the gun, and her shooting woes continue. The top score in the league, one of her last 12. Notice it was great help on the offside that came to help out with Nadiria when she drove that time. That's going to be important for Campbell down the stretch. Continue that. This Campbell offense shot at nearly 60% in the win yesterday. Three players and double figures. Their best scorer is Taya Bolden, and she's coming off the bench tonight. Asheville defense today. Faith Adams guarding Saranyo, who pops the jumper. Saranyo smooth, steady, always the same. Smooth like a cup of joe in the morning, nice and comfortable <laughs> for the junior guard, who's up to scoring three points a game in conference action. Corpening with a risky pass. Carter saves it through some contact. Wow, no foul there. Carter on the floor and a jump ball. Possession goes to Campbell. Whew. A lot of contact both ways that time. Our officiating crew letting them play something we saw in last night's game. One player who got in trouble was Nadiria Evans. She had four fouls in 20 minutes. Yeah, missed about 10 minutes of the game for, for Asheville. That makes it tough. She's the heart and soul of the Asheville basketball team. Shai Tooley's first three of the night is a bit off. Evans in that loss dropped from first in the league in scoring down to third in the league in scoring. It's close. It's tied up there at the top of that scoring league. Kyla McMakin, Skyler Curran, the lead big south as Carter, an offensive bump into the chest of Staves. Brittany Staves' defense has been excellent this series. Good stand by Staves. And, you know, she's, she's just really coming along well for Campbell. And, being very effective at the right time of the year, too. Ronnie Fisher's bench has been depleted tonight. No Christabella Zuma with a pregame injury. No Ashlyn Hampton. They do get back Faith Price tonight as McNamara Clement makes it. She's smooth. She makes it look easy when she turns and goes with her left hand. It does make you wonder with the lack of post depth for Campbell, how many minutes will Lauren and Taya have to combine for tonight? 
going to be interesting to see down the stretch. Serrano, who called for the foul. She wanted the steal. Yeah, a little too much help that time. Serrano doing a good job of stepping in, helping. Just a little bit of a bump that time. Serrano is one of three starters with 20 or more steals. Big reason why this defense has been sharp. Absolutely. She gets after it. Tooley gets after it. And part of that, too, is the minutes they play. They both average 35 minutes a night. Takes a lot of stamina to do that. Those Nad ladies are in tip-top shape. It has been a rough week for Nadiria Evans. Campbell making it difficult because they're doing a good job with their help. Now in transition, Tooley is short. Shai Tooley, a tough shooting start in this series, one of 10. Kai Carter is blocked. Oh, a foul. Bolden picks up her first. Oh, well, Carter's going to go to the free throw line on that one. And Just a late close out there by Bolden, or what would you see? Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure. I got blocked on that and didn't get a good eye on that, Evan. But I, I know Carter going to the free throw line. She's a good free throw shooter. so She makes 72% of her free throws and has really become that second scoring piece for Asheville after averaging just two points a game last year. Yeah, she's grown as a player. It's really been a plus for this Asheville basketball team. She's an effective three-point shooter, good well-rounded player, very good rebounder for Asheville, their leading rebounder. Gets three free throws on the foul from Taya Bolden. Played 32 minutes in the game last night. We'll see how this game impacts a lot of these young, uh, players and the amount of minutes that they played on yesterday. On cue, a couple of subs. Tamia Lewis and Raquel Cassidy, two underclassmen check in for Asheville. Tamia Lewis, a player that had a pretty good game for Asheville on yesterday, however. Yeah, Lewis, eight points off the bench. The senior stepped up. That game was out of hand early in the third quarter, but she played well. She played with a lot of heart, never quit. Bolden coming off her 42nd career double-figure scoring game, which sounds preposterous to think about in four years. Hard to believe it's been four years with that young lady. And we have a foul on Asheville away from the ball. I think Campbell was even confused by that call. Yeah, I'm not sure where that was. Uh, that, was on Lo that was on Cassidy, actually, her first. Okay. Refs say holding away from the ball. It's Dan Outlaw, our umpire, with the call. Officials doing a good job of trying to keep things under control early on. Very important. What have you thought of Asheville's defense here in these first five minutes? Well, they're after it. They look very intense today. They look very refreshed. They've come re prepared to play. Faith Adams on cue to steal and gives it right back. That has been the learning curve for Honey Brown's club, trying to work through these young experiences and these players trying to get on the same page. Yeah, and you see her over there encouraging her team, which is so important with a young, youthful team. Nine underclassmen, that, uh, underclass players that Asheville has on their team. They built their team around those three seniors, too. They're very seasoned. And Adams trips up Serrano. Honey Brown in her first year as the head coach, and what has she done? Nine wins, including three wins against the two best teams in the league. Yeah, she's been a big part of this Asheville program for a long time, a great recruiter, just a strong work ethic. I can remember way back in my coaching days, never went anywhere, I didn't run into the Asheville coaches. They were always beating the bushes. Following the footsteps of Brenna Mock Kirkpatrick, that program was resurrected from the ashes. Two conference titles in seven years. Really a strong tradition there. Not just a great vacation town, now a basketball city as Carver hits her first three. Carver, another player for Campbell. That, that's really turning it up a notch. Over her last five season. games, she's made 12 triples. And Saranya is fouled. That's Nadiria Evans, her third offensive foul of this week. There's a really a battle in there with Nadiria and, uh, and, and uh, Saranya. We'll take a timeout. Campbell up by two here in the first quarter. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, 
We have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually gonna happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. Our new house is amazing. Great street, huge yard. There is a bit of an issue with our neighbor's fencing. <laughs> At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Which helps us save even more. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Peter. Touche. What? Ah. Bring down. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. The doctor said I had prostate cancer. I needed to do something. I said, like, can I go to proton therapy? Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute. He said, yeah, I can do it, man. It's a freeze, man. When I went for the treatments, there were no side effects. Whatever you could do before, you could do. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad I can go down there. But I tell you right now, I, I, I want to let those people know that I really appreciate it. And HU is his spot. This is Cindy. When you call her up, she's not so nice on the phone. This is Jen. This is Ashley. This is Music make you lose control. Let's go. Rock a show, stop a beat, get it crunk and wired. Wave your hands, scream loud. Everybody here, get it out of control. Campbell leads by two early in this first quarter. And how about in the Big South Conference? Longwood, the dynamic duo of Kyla McMakin and Akila Smith leading this league. Making Longwood a very dangerous club. Well, they really are. You know, they are so good. I mean, she, McMakin is unbelievable. Some of the shots that she can make. And Smith is just, she does it, she just does everything so well. Great rebounder, shoots well from the floor, uh, can get up and block it. Just a very, very good basketball team. Adiria Evans with only two points last night, fell down to third in the scoring. How about that pass that bounces to Bolden? I think we might have got a little help that time from Asheville off their hands. That's a hockey assist. <laughs> yeah, it's, that scoring at the top is close. One night can have a huge impact. Six players in the Big South average at least 15 points. And yet for a Campbell team that's second in the league, they have no player with more than 12. Pretty well-rounded team effort for Campbell. Adams with eight, finds Corpening for three. How about Taya Bolden, another rebound, 910 in her career. You're missing Bolden. Just look at what ball coming off the rim. She's going to be around it every time. Those magnet hands have moved into 10th among active players in career rebounds in Division I basketball. And she's the shortest player on that list at 5'10". Big heart. Big heart. Something that can't be measured. The senior on the sophomore, Cassidy, kicks to Staves. The three is a bit off. You know, you see Bolden inside, backside, that pass to the opposite side of the floor. That's probably a big reason why she's doing so well with her assist as well, to be a big man. Nearly three assists a night for Bolden. I think she's making quite a case to be first team all conference. He's got to be in the running. That'll he, come out on Friday afternoon. Got to be. I think Nadiri Evans of Asheville will be in that conversation. Be curious of the forward position. Akilah Smith for Longwood's been excellent. Corpening lost track of the clock and the prayer I think that should be a violation. Instead, Carter is blocked, and it's Campbell ball. No, oh, whoa. Wait a second there. Wow, it's rough out there, Evan. Here's Ronnie Fisher, his club looking to earn a number two seed. They won the championship last year. What's impressed about his ability to manage the lack of depth here in the second half of conference play? Coach Fisher gets them ready. I mean, he always has his ball clubs ready. They're always playing with intensity, and they're always sharp when it comes to defense. I think Brittany Staves has been huge in that development. There's nearly a turnover. Wilson hangs on with 10 on the clock. Well, and, you know, Campbell's so effective offensively as well last night. 
Evans, good shot fake. Man, Elmack made that tough. Yeah, Campbell doing a good job on Evans. Yesterday, Saron had just an unbelievable job. Faith on Price Evans. is back in. She missed the last two games with concussion symptoms. Healthy tonight. And a good three point specialist to add to this team as Serrano misses it. Oh, she got, she got it in the face. Physical game when these teams meet. The all time series has been dominated by Campbell. And here comes Nadiria Evans driving in. Cool. A lot of black jerseys around her when she went to the basket that time. Campbell has really upped the ante on their defensive help when it comes to Evans getting to the basket. So Nadiria Evans, an 18-point a game scorer, she's only attempted one three-pointer all year. All of her buckets come in the paint, and Campbell's been ready for that challenge. They really have. She's a good mid-range player, but Saranya and company have made it difficult for her of late. In this series, Evans is now one of 13 shooting. She does get to the free throw line a bunch, 140 attempts. That mid-range player that she is and her penetration, she's she, she's got such good speed and change of pace that it gets her to the line frequently. Nashville back within two. They haven't made a field goal in seven minutes. McNamara Clement with position. Ooh, that's a bit errant. You can tell she's forcing things a little bit tonight after that double-double yesterday. Yeah, Wilson did a good job with her hands up that time, too, when she went to the basket. Oh, man, Evans has had a tough week here. Another miss. Just a lid on it for her. She was the first player in this gym taking pregame shots. You knew she wanted to get it going. He's a competitor. You know what's crazy, Wanda? If Campbell wins this game, Asheville will most likely be the seven seed, and they will meet again on Monday night. Oh, wow. As Tooley is fouled. How does that go into a coach's mindset? <laughs> Playing somebody twice in a row is different. Make it a third time, that's a whole new equation. Well, you don't have to worry too much about your scout. I don't think there'll be any well-kept secrets by either team, do you? You can only hide a few things. <laughs> Everybody's got a few things in their pocket come tournament time. She gets her first point of this ball game. Tooley right now is at 12 points a game. A slower finish to her season, but she was so critical from three in conference play. Yeah, I thought Tooley was really effective for Campbell when they came off of that 20-some-odd day, 26-day drought of not playing. She was so effective for Campbell at Radford. In the clutch, she gets it done. Coach Fisher credits her excellent conditioning. Big reason why she stepped up here in the month of March. Looks Here's like the lob into Evans. That's a lot of traffic for Nadiri and a difficult shot. Looks like they're trying to get her in there and pin her up a little bit on Carver, who gives up a little bit of size with Carver Gardner. One minute to go in this first quarter. Campbell up four. Price for three. She can hit it. Good to see Faith Price back. She's a 40% three-point shooter in league play. Evans trying to get going, yet to hit a bucket from the field. Feeds Wilson for three, who misses. A little energy picking up late in this first quarter. Down low to the post presence. Her second career double-double last night. Volleyball taps it to Price, who can't make it count. Carver, that's five rebounds for Carver already, I believe. These teams have combined O of their last 17 shooting. Something's got to give here in the closing seconds. Six rebounds for Carter. Six. Reach in on Tatiana Carver. One away from the bonus here with eight seconds left. Evans is trying to pin up on Carver. Wouldn't be surprised to see her go down to the low block again and try to pin up on her, trying to capitalize on the size difference. If you're Honey Brown, you got to like the offense. They scored four in the first yesterday. Now with seven tonight. Tonight. Evans dared to go left. Shot clock. Wilson at the gun is good. Abigail Wilson gets Asheville back within one. To end the first quarter. Good we time. head to the second here in Bowie's Creek.
A good timing by Asheville that time. Evans is giving it up, finding an open person. Another tight one between Campbell and UNC Asheville. That's been the story of these two here recently. The Bulldogs having racing success over Campbell. And Wando, every time these teams meet, it's a physical matchup in Big South play. It always is. It's a great rivalry. It has been for years. And uh, there have been some battles over the years. And I'm sure this one will be no different. Two competitive coaches, two competitive teams. Asheville flushing the system after a really slow start yesterday. They trailed by 14 after the first quarter. Much better second quarter here tonight. It's physical out there. It's a battle. The Bulldogs, though, just shooting 15%. Their top dog, Nadiri Evans, has struggled. And the three-point woe is now one of six. What Nadiri is doing well, though, is she's finding the open person when she's drawing all the defense. That's something Honey Brown mentioned to us. Her passing ability has developed so much here as a senior. Asheville doing a good job helping too now. Carver with eight is blocked. Back out to Serrano. Converts. I tell you, steady, steady, steady. Serrano is. 28-3 of the season for Serrano. Campbell, in fact, that's been their strength. Top three in the league in three-point shooting. Asheville running four out with a low man down. A lot of five out. How can they get Evans going? That is the question uh, tonight. Pretty, oh, that was pretty passed by Evans. Wilson, a long two. That's even longer. Something about this Campbell defense just makes it difficult to shoot if you're an opponent as Wilson gets the steal. Evans sets up Carter. Campbell daring her to shoot, and Tooley robs her. Well, that's where Tooley's really come along. She picks up so many steals. And in transition, misses it. The basket has been glued shut here in this first half. Corpening slowing it down a little bit for Asheville. Everyone's trying to catch Central Florida as a great defensive team in this country. Might be on display tonight as Evans gets going. And she did that off a good screen up top by Asheville that time. 
Breaks an 0 for 5 start to her night. Don't tell me these players don't look at the standings tonight. Asheville with a win, can move up to the top five. Campbell with a win, can, send, can move up to the top five. Campbell with a win, can see number two. Here's Serrano drawing two free throws. Yeah, it comes to a head, you know. It how do you how do you clear that out? Because at some yeah. point you have to look at your record and know there's one game left. There's not much else besides tonight. Yeah, you just, I think going out, getting the job done takes care of everything. You just have to stress that over and over again. It's Ranyu, a 80% free throw shooter, which is now top 10 in the league. And on cue, she missed it. You changed her, Evan. <laughs> That has been a bugaboo for Ronnie Fisher's club. 60% as a ball club, worst in the league. Something he came into the year and saying, I think we have a good free throw shooting team. Didn't spend as much time on in the preseason, and now they spent double the time to get it better yeah. here. It's one of those things that usually takes care of itself in time. Corpening lost it off her own leg. And Asheville with six turnovers in this first half. Keep in mind, Campbell undermanned tonight. No Christabel Azuma, Michaela Coleman battling nagging injuries. And yeah. no Ashlyn Hampton tonight. So they got to find some options. Yeah, they do. They're, neither team's shooting particularly well right now. Asheville's at full strength. Just the lack of scoring options is being costly here. Thule is ripped out by Carter. Good, yeah, good grab by Carter that time. Evans letting it fly, and it flies out of bounds. Man, if you're Nadiri Evans, how do you clear the mind? And after this one for six start following yesterday's game, how does the leading scorer in this conference get going? Yeah, well, you don't get going if you don't keep shooting. Good shooters keep shooting. You, and You've coached and, plenty of them. And doing, and doing what she's been doing pretty well, finding the open person, too. And she missed that one, but she's found a lot of open players for Asheville. All the shots haven't gone down, but... Bolden down low, right to her spot. That's where Bolden dominated yesterday's game for 16 points. Yeah. It's going to be big for Campbell. She can keep doing that. Bolden has six. It's Saranya with six herself to lead the squad. Air ball on the three. And Cassidy is fouled. It's a good offensive rebound for Asheville and a second chance opportunity to get to the free throw line and score off of that. They need more of that as well. Neither team shooting that well. Offensive rebounding is going to be important. Moana Serrano getting a rare breather here. You see Drea Anderson check in. And we asked Ronnie Fisher about that, managing the minutes. Here's Shai Tuli and Serrano out at the same time. Well, you know, uh, Saranya got a big defensive task in Garden Evans. She, she needs a, a few breaks, I'm sure, from time to time, and especially after that defensive effort she had yesterday. Those two played 38 minutes plus in a win. It's 37 a night. This is nothing new for the duo, but those oh, no. minutes do add up after time. Without their top two scores, Campbell works it through the post. Anderson, she wants a three right off the bench. Can't get it to go. I do like the aggressive shooting from the freshman who checks in right away. Carter's had a lot of trouble with this Campbell defense until now. There's that screen again up top by Cassidy. Raquel Cassidy, the sophomore to Gainesville, Florida, getting open her scorer. Bolden's life's been tough on Cassidy, and she's fouled. Little hand check. Can't lay your hands on her when she starts to the basket and faces you. UNC Asheville has lost three straight games, but we've seen much better energy tonight from Honey Brown's club. Yeah, it's a lot of intensity out on the floor tonight by both teams. There's a steal for Corpening. Pushing it ahead to Evans. Campbell has bottled up Nadiri Evans all night. So 
Wilson, the freshman, little pick and pop to Carter, who misses. Oh. Carver wants to run. Finds the freshman. Here's the three, and it's in. How about that? First three-pointer for Randria Anderson. Playing with a lot of confidence. Timeout, UNC Asheville. It's a five-point Campbell lead, largest of this ball game here on ESPN+. Plus. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires. Ride strength. There's not a secret to what actually happens in scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we try and educate the client in each step of what happened and actually have them make the educated around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. Our new house is amazing. Great street, huge yard. There is a bit of an issue with our neighbor's fencing. <laughs> At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Which helps us save even more. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Peter. Touche. Ah. What? Are you down? For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. The doctor said I had prostate cancer. I needed to do something else. I can I go to proton therapy? Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute. He said, yeah, I can do it, man. So freeze, man. When I went for the treatments, there were no side effects. Whatever you could do before, you could do it after. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad I can go down there. But I tell you right now, I, it, I, I wanted to let those people know that I really appreciate it. And H U is his fun. This is Cindy. When you call her up, she's not so nice on the phone. This is Jen. This is Ashley. This is Music make you lose control. Let's go. Rock a show, stop a beat, get it crunk and wired. Wave your hands, scream loud. Everybody here, get it out of control. We have a matchup with two of the top six teams in the Big South Conference. And what does each do well? For Campbell, it starts on the defensive end with that scoring defense. And UNC Asheville, they can hit three-pointers. Been a tough story for the, the Bulldogs shooting the ball tonight. Yeah, it really has. Uh, I, I, I like the penetration that we're seeing by Evans and she's finding her teammates but they've not been able to nail it yet on the other hand I really like the fact Anderson went down and knocked that three in when she had missed the three the time before down the floor came back down with a lot of confidence and knocked that three ball in her second three of her season as there's Nadiria Evans Third leading <laughs> scorer in the Big South. If she gets cooking, this is a whole different ballgame. Yeah, game. Campbell's going to want to keep her in check for sure. And an offensive foul, the pick for Anderson. Yeah, I think that's a combination of two things. I don't think they got set on the screen before we went. Um, and we got to hold her ground when we set it. That's the learning curve for Randre Anderson. Only averages five minutes a game in conference, but big minutes. Nice dish to Evan. Wilson to finish. Beautiful pass by Evans. She's complimenting her teammates well when she's covered up. Here we go. And Adiri Evans heating up. You can see it in her eyes. That one last audition for a first team all conference berth. More importantly, a top six seed. Watching inside backside look by Bolden if she doesn't go up, but she gets it in. The friendly bounce gives Bolden six points. It's clinical watching Taya Bolden in there. He's become really steady. Averaging 12 points and nine rebounds a game. Here's a steal for Bolden. And she's fouled. Ooh, that's a ticky tacky call by Dan Outlaw. Evans gets called for a second. Cool. Does that need to be called there? 
Yeah. I mean, a little hand check, but in the in the grand scheme of things, there's been a lot of contact today. Yeah, it's one of those retaliation fouls. You know, as a coach, I used to hate those because you, you try to get it back. And, and uh, yeah, I guess you have to call them. I don't know. If you think it's an advantage or disadvantage, I guess you have to call them. So now Tamia Lewis, the senior, comes in. Evans to the bench for, I imagine, what, the next three and a half minutes? I would imagine. Faith Price, creative angle. Rebound, Jamia Blake. Both these teams deep into their benches tonight. Big South Tournament starts on Saturday. Here's Corpeting setting up Blake. Now Lewis for three. What a nice start from deep. Wow, nice shot. We saw her play well yesterday. Eight points yesterday, now five tonight. It may not be Evans in this game, but Asheville's finding scoring. There's a rush shot by Carver. Yeah, and I'll tell you another thing Asheville's doing a lot better on is they're not giving up those offensive rebounds that Campbell got early on yesterday that made a difference in the game, too, getting second shot opportunities. They're, they're covering up their defensive board. Asheville's made three straight from the field to tie it up. Now Lewis wants the clear out with nine. And an offensive foul. Illegal pick on Jamia Blake. Wow. Seen a lot of illegal screens tonight, huh? Didn't see as many yesterday. There's a new crew here in Gore Arena. That's a big adjustment, too, when you play a team back-to-back. -back. You have a different officiating crew. Yeah. It's the name of the game. You just have to really learn to adjust to the officials. Uh, I think that's a hard lesson for all players to learn. But How's it like for coaches with 549 wins trying to adjust to an official? <laughs> yeah, it was always tough for me. <laughs> Because, Wanda, you're the nicest lady I've ever met in the booth. But when you're out on the court, it's a different pers persona <laughs> that these officials deal with. Coaches are intense. Yeah, I used to say, I played golf for fun, black basketball for keeps. Saranio gets a nice pick. Now down low to Elmac with 10. Price has attempted 1-3 tonight with 4. Down to two. Elmac heaves it up, and it did not touch the backboard. Too bad they couldn't have gotten that shot off just a little earlier because Bolden was right there to get the rebound on the opposite side. But Asheville, again, a good defensive stand by Asheville that time, holding Campbell down in that shot clock. Asheville's a good defense. They only give up 63 a night. Yeah. It's just been the offense that's been missing in these first two games. Evans on Serrano, blows by her, sets up a shooter in Carter with the foul. Madiria Evans has been great distributing the ball tonight. She really has. Already two assists. She's got six points. And taking the, the challenge of this group, the offense has not been clicking, but she's getting players open. Your coach has got faith in her, too, to put her in with those two fouls with, a, you know, just under two minutes to play in the half. Be interested to see if she stays out there, if she comes back. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Smart move. Happening. Get her out on defense yep. and let her operate the third leading score in the Big South. Kai Carter gives Asheville's first lead since the opening 10 seconds of this game. A little surprised to see Shai Tooley on the bench. I know she has two fouls. Not a lot of shooters right now. Campbell with a win tonight secures a number two seed. The semifinals would roll through Bowie's Creek. Bolden dishes out. Serrano for three is short. A second chance is a short. Oh, my gosh. Just 30% shooting for Campbell, 29% for Asheville. Maybe defense wearing down these two teams. They have a tough time shooting it. Carter for three. Way off. Ooh. Final minute of this first half. Who's going to get going on offense? Instead, a steal. Carter, down low to Corpening. Well, great hustle by both teams out on the floor. Asheville's forced eight Campbell turnovers. Surround to the floor again. 
How about the physicality? Final game of the season. A chance these teams could meet again on Monday night. And they are getting after it. Boy, are they ever. Bolden on the switch with Carter. Clock to four. Corpening with one. Tough shot. She makes it. Wow, that's another bucket by Asheville right on the horn. Largest lead for Asheville in this series. Campbell will hold for the final shot. They have missed eight straight. Saranya with three defenders, kicks to Bolden. Taya needs to shoot quickly. Anderson at the gun. And we're at halftime. The Bulldogs heating up from three. Three triples in this first half, giving UNC Asheville a five-point lead at the break. When we come back, the Geico halftime report. Asheville cooking, shooting the ball well in this second quarter. They lead by five. Welcome back inside Gore Arena for the Geico Halftime Report. UNC Asheville, a five-point lead at the break. They finished the half on an 8-0 run to turn the time. A reminder, Geico, you could save more. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Geico, proud sponsor of the Big South Conference. We're going to jump courtside here with the coach, drawing up her numbers, getting you all set to go. Wanda, we've seen Asheville eight straight points to end this half. What stood out to you about the first 20 minutes from an Asheville perspective? Well, I think really what stood out to me was their shooting improved so much in the second quarter, and it made a big difference in the outcome of the score at halftime. They shot the ball just a little under 50%, about 46 or 47% from the floor. They also limited Campbell to the offensive glass. They did a good job protecting their defensive board, which were two areas that they both, that they Asheville struggled in on yesterday, but they've really improved upon today. Kai Carter with seven points and eight rebounds in that first half. A good scoring piece with Indiri Evans still struggling in this series. Struggling at really keeping a level head out there. I think finding her teammates, creating for others when she can't score. 
see how how she adapts throughout the remainder of the game. And for Campbell, a good shooting start in the first quarter, but how about that second quarter, just 33%. They're taking a lot of threes, just haven't fallen tonight. Yeah, it, it, I mean, the game is early. There's a lot ahead of us. Uh, I'm sure anything can happen when we come back out in the second half. Two competitive, very intense basketball teams going after it out there tonight. It's a five-point game of the break. We'll have the next 20 minutes and we return here on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back inside Gore Arena, the Geico Halftime Report, also presented by Pepsi, the official beverage partner of the Big South Conference. Enjoy a refreshing Pepsi today. Put it on Wanda Watkins' tab. <laughs> it's UNC Asheville up by five at the break. The Bulldogs this year, nine and one, by leading at the half. A much better first 20 minutes from both these squads here tonight. And Wanda, here in these highlights, Campbell early on worked the ball down low. Give both teams credit. They got their offenses cooking in the first half. Yeah, I mean, they really did. It's been a good, good battle. And uh, I'm sure an exciting one for fans to watch. And uh, How about Bolden there, that deflection? She had six early points. She did. Wall hits a nice one out here on the perimeter, as does Saranya. Here we're going to get a look at Evans getting to the basket and knocking one in. Campbell worked it inside. They had points in the paint, a plenty. But as opposed to game one, shots were much tougher for Campbell down low. They did find a way to space it out with some threes from Anderson. Yeah, good lift by Anderson coming off the bench on that three-point shot. Wall knocking another one in for Asheville. It's a battle out there, that's for sure. Then down the stretch, Asheville on an 8-0 run to end the half putting themselves in great position. And it's UNC Asheville, a five-point lead at the break. When we come back, some numbers, what it all means in the conference standings after this on ESPN+. Plus.
Welcome back to the Geico Halftime Report. UNC Asheville, a five-point lead at the break. This game's been pretty even from here on out, and the reason why, it's been a competitive game in terms of stats. Look at this, even in field goal percentage. Asheville plus three on the boards after losing the rebounding battle by 18 yesterday. The Bulldogs get to the free throw in a bit more. Yeah, I mean, I really think the only differential, really, that we're seeing is just that UNC Asheville shot the basketball a little bit better in the second quarter than Campbell, and that's made a little bit of a difference in the outcome of the score. It's, it's really been a good battle, both quarters. Good half of basketball. Looking forward to this next one. You ready? I'm ready. Let's ready. Let's, hey, let's focus on the standings, because, Coach, this game has been idly <laughs> important. Only two games left yeah. in the league tonight. Campbell with a win, secures that number two seed. And look at Asheville trying to avoid a play-in round. No Hampton in the conference tournament. So the seeding going to be a little bit different. However, so important for Asheville to get to that 10th win. Yeah, it really is. You know, you really <laughs> want to work hard not to be in that play-in game if you can help it. Uh, you make your bed, you have to lie in it. And that's what both these teams are facing tonight. Campbell working hard to try to get that number two seed. Asheville's trying to stay out of that playing game. The other game tonight, Presbyterian is playing Winthrop. They get a win, and PC secures that 4-5 matchup that'll be on Monday night. Asheville trying to avoid a Saturday game against God knows who, because it's very complicated in the standings. When we come back to the second half here in Bowie's Creek, Asheville leads by five. Second half rolling here in Bowie's Creek. UNC Asheville under Honey Brown lead by five at the break. The Bulldogs have not won in this building in the John W. Pope Convocation Center in four years. They're off to a good start in 20 minutes. Here we go. Just got to get the players' attention so we can get things rolling in the second half. Campbell have been off 26 straight days until returning this past weekend against Radford. They split that series. Now looking to close with three straight wins in conference play. Saranya aggressive early and the harm on Faith Adams. Smart play by Saranya, going hard to the basket, drawing the foul. Should be a two-shot foul. It is a shooting foul. Only the fifth and sixth free throws for Campbell tonight. You know, and not many free throws yesterday either. mentioned this Campbell team at 60%. That is worst in the league. 
Conversely, of Nadiri Evans on their side of the court, who's fifth in the country in made free throws. Yeah, and she gets to that free throw line too, buddy. Milwaukee leads the country. They shoot 88% from the charity stripe. Here's Brittany Staves saving a miss. That's a good extra grab there by Corpening, another loose ball and is taken back. Need to reset the clock here. There was a change of possession. I got it. No, you got it. No, I've got it. How about that one? I think both those turnovers could have been avoided. <laughs> yeah. And we reset like we just did to end the quarter. <laughs> well, we're starting this half all over again here. Yeah, just 24 <laughs> seconds off, maybe a point in. Let's see if Shai Tooley can get going. Just two points tonight. She's the second leading scorer for Campbell. We're well, putting a lot of pressure on Tooley, too. McNamara Clement with the mismatch is foul. That's Wilson. Not a real difficult, or not a real hard foul. No. You do wonder the adjustment Asheville's made after Lauren had a double-double last night. They've made life a little more difficult for her. Yeah, it hadn't come as easily, that's for sure. Two early fouls in these first 39 seconds. Seen a lot more energy from Asheville tonight. Evans has six, Carter with seven. Those are the top dogs for the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. Evans cannot get another roll, my gosh. I don't think she's gonna sleep well with these rims tonight. Hey, that one rolled around and off. Evans at 18 a game, a great scorer, but nothing's been falling for her. McNamara Clement working hard in the paint, pinning up. Gets her touch, and a blocking foul on Corpening. That's three quick fouls in the first minute. They're gonna call, I think they're going to call that an offensive. Oh, okay, Brittany Staves with the harm. We need someone like Paige Beckers to jump into this equation. The nation's leading scorer for UConn. Evans, the crossover. And fouled on her way up. Deary Evans gets to the free throw line as well as any player in the country. Fifth in attempts behind Anastasia Hayes and tenth in makes. Been to the free throw line 167 times, Evan. Make it 168. And for a player who doesn't shoot three-pointers, what makes her so tough to guard? She's going to that basket. I just think she's drawing fouls by going to the basket being such a threat. And a good free throw shooter, but she's missed some tonight. In the series where they swept Longwood, she averaged 30 points a night. She also attempted 28 free throws in those two games. Wow. Brittany Staves for three. That was way off. Tell she shot that one a little fat. I wonder if there's some tired legs tonight. These teams are a combined six of 30 from three-point land. Yeah, I gotta wonder. Yesterday was a grueling battle. Tamia Lewis with some pressure. Look at Serrano trying to swipe loose Evans. Looking for some offense in this third quarter. Where well, Asheville really coping, putting a lot of pressure on Tooley. Only four points in this series for Tooley, who has consistently been an excellent scorer. Serrano's turn. Corpening the rebound. Corpening's really good player for Asheville all over the place. Wilson for three. Why not it. in rhythm? She can hit it. Second three for Abby Wilson. Two for three tonight from Wilson from three-point territory so far. Your defense can only be as good as your offense, right? And for Asheville, it's been their offense carrying the load. There's a good screen on Tooley. Tooley is short. Who's going to slow down Evans? Right now, nobody all alone for the layup. And Brittany Staves is down. Uh-oh, ankle, I believe. And that's not what you want to see with another player injured for Campbell tonight. 
I didn't see what happened. She must have landed on someone's foot. Already down three players due to injury. It's good to see her bearing a little weight on that. That's good to see. Ronnie Fisher already down bodies. He's going to have to really try to work the system here to get a five to get him through these minutes. You do wonder as a coach, if you're Ronnie Fisher, how do you clean the slate, find your five players available, and regardless of who's healthy, get a lineup in there? I tell you, coaching's tough. Coaching is a tough profession. You just got to be ready for the unexpected all the time. So Staves down for the moment. Azuma was injured in pregame warm-ups. Campbell has a five on the floor right now that's shooting 28%. Yeah. And Bolden's foul, it's the fourth team foul for Asheville. It's been four years since Asheville's won here in Gore Arena. And they're showing some great signs tonight in the midst of a 6-0 run. I'm impressed with the defense on Tooley. And a hand check foul on Malia Lockett. Yeah, what, what has Asheville done to really limit Shai Tooley to just two points tonight? Corpening's tailing her everywhere she goes. I mean, sometimes she's not even seeing the ball. She's just so all over Tooley. We've seen teams run a box and one defense on Tooley, everything they can to try to limit her touches. Good screen by McNamara Clem at that time. Tooley with space, gets nothing but air. Back comes Evans, forced to dish. Carter gets the lane, a block from McNamara Clement. Saranio ahead of the pack. Oh, wanted a foul, no, nothing called. Here comes Carter, driving in. That should have been a travel. Yep. Well, final game of the regular season, everybody's getting the kinks out. Four bodies everywhere. Surprised Carver didn't shoot it there. He's been a great three-point shooter, 40% in league play. And a foul on Abigail Wilson, five team fouls for Asheville. Cannot lay your hands on her when she turns around and faces the basket. So here's Taya Bolden to the free throw line where the numbers have really stepped up, 68%. We do mention yeah. Nadiri Evans, top five in attempts. Bolden's Campbell's leader at 88 attempts. Well, and this is an area that Bolden's really worked hard on. Her free throw percentage is almost up to 70% now. It may now, not, yeah. Now that we talk about that, I'm sorry, Evan, but now that we talk about that, she misses, but she's really worked hard on her free throws. Campbell sitting on three points in this third quarter. And still three points. Wow. Something's got to give. Your defense is so good, but where's the offense going to come from tonight? Brittany Staves out with an apparent injury. The options are running low here. Asheville looking for that backdoor cut on that play. Now they're pinning up Corperning inside on Tooley. That's the third on Shai Tooley, who has been tailed around like a dog in the park. Mira Corperning doing a great job. Boy, we don't need Tooley, or Campbell doesn't need Tooley in foul trouble. This 6 0 runs lasted three minutes. Good defense from Asheville, leading to chances mm -hmm. on offense. Watch the battle inside with Serrano and. Here's Nigeria Evans. Evans on the move. No good. Tooley working so hard to get space. Campbell being patient here. Port at possession. This is where the lack of three-point shooting might hurt Campbell here. McNamara Clement, not a threat to shoot. Out to Bolden, who does shoot, and there you go. Timeout, Ronnie Fisher will take it as well. Asheville up by six, midway through.
Hercules Tires is the official tire of the Big South Conference and for over 65 years providing tires with unbeatable quality and an unmatched value right on our strength with Hercules Tires. You know what's been strong that I want to? UNC Asheville shooting in this third quarter, now leading by six. Yep. Well, hitting a nice three-pointer that time. Good teamwork by Asheville. UNC Asheville's really getting going from the field. After in the first half, only shot at 30%, now up to 35%. It seems incremental, but given the way this game's gone, any basket would be huge. Here's Faith Adams for three, and nearly had it that time. Okay, so Campbell's without two main starters. They have Bolden and Elmack on the court. Not big three-point threat, so Thule drives oh. in. Excellent defense by Corpening. Yeah, Evan, I think I've got Jessica Wall on my mind. I look over there across the way and see her, the big three-point shooter from Asheville, who's her dobo now. The career leader in three-point shooter. And Paige Love, who two very competitive Asheville players now on their coaching staff. Great players. Well, here's Wilson, a bit off. Bolden has now passed 900 career points and 900 career rebounds. Look at the size mismatch here. Out to Serrano for three. Campbell needed that one. There's a bucket Campbell been looking for. Doesn't Serrano just look a little exhausted after yeah, that shot? She shift? looks like she keeps grimacing, like something's bothering her. <laughs> this is a team just battling for minutes here, trying to find anybody available. Evans the step back. Rough weekend. Bolden saves it to the wrong team. Carter is stripped. Bolden to the floor, and she saves it. Two on two. Thule. Yeah, there's your blocking foul on Faith Adams. Campbell in the bonus. Oh, it's rough out there. Timeout on the court. 3.15 to go in the third. We got a three-point ball game. <laughs> We are not merely an institution of higher education. We are transforming lives and empowering students to become leaders. Leaders in our communities. In our state and throughout the world. Leaders in innovation. Leaders in service to our neighbors. Join our movement. Join our community. Join our Lead with purpose. Lead with Campbell. If you thought you saw the last of double cheeseburger pizza, think again. Because it's back at Papa John's again. Get a large double cheeseburger pizza for just 12 bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. When you shoot the zesty burger sauce rapids on this new double cheeseburger papadilla, oh, you're going to want to capsize in that chunder dome of meat, cheese, and pickles. The new double cheeseburger papadilla and the return of double cheeseburger pizza, Papa John's. In the last 10 years, Emerge Orthopedics has really been on the forefront of doing orthopedic urgent care. Uh, we realize that a lot of these accidents happen after hours and patients want to get seen and get diagnosed and get taken care of. Emerge has a number of orthopedic urgent cares throughout the triangle, and some of which are open seven days a week, open till nine o'clock at night, and that's been a huge benefit to patients. Patients routinely give us compliments on that and the care they receive there. Welcome back inside Go Arena. Midway through this third quarter, UNC Asheville hanging on to a three-point lead. After last night's game, Campbell dominated from the jump, won by 30 points. 
Wanda, what's made this game so competitive tonight? Well, I think both teams are very intense. Asheville came out much more intense tonight, I think, from the get-go. Both teams look a little bit tired uh, from yesterday's game. And, and that's the thing with these series. They can wear on you. But we've got a battle. Especially this being uh, the final game of the regular season. Yeah. And so much at stake. You do wonder if each team's feeling each other out because if Campbell wins tonight, there's a high percentage chance these teams meet again on Monday. Wow, wouldn't that be something? Turn right back around and play each other for the third time. Adiri Evans, who's now up to nine points, would love to find a different arena to shoot in. <laughs> Tough week from the offensive side of things. One player who stepped up, though, is Wilson with eight. And Corpening's been a defensive magnet for the Bulldogs. Well, and you know, Brown talked a lot about Wilson being a basic fundamental player, and, she, and she's, she's showing out. Great defense way. by Tooley. Evans with five. Forces a great pass to Lewis. Who's got it? Wow. It's third Ash Asheville's third bucket on the horn like that in this game. An incredible pass. Leads to an even better shot for Tamia Lewis. Boy, was it ever. She draws so much attention when she goes to the basket. Saranya wants to respond. Steady Saranya. I call her Steady Saranya. She is so valuable to Campbell. Ten points for Saranya. Who's now at ten points a game in the conference. Back-to-back -back threes. Huge for Campbell. Deep three for Carter. out. <laughs> oh. Man, we want a shot to go in. I'm feeling offense here yeah. in the third. A good break for Campbell. That didn't go. Combined 10 three-pointers. That's been the gist of the offense tonight. Tooley with a switch on Evans. This is a rare moment. Elmack with under 10. It is blocked. No, it was a – wait. Oh, uh-oh. Taya Bolden is now down. Oh, wow. Another injury. And that does not look good. Maybe the Achilles there. Don't know for sure, but never a pretty sight. No, you'd hope not. Already a fair share of players shaken up in this one. Life difficult, holding Campbell to 32%. Wilson will dribble hand off. Nice back slip to Corpeting. Oh, I don't know how she held on to that. Evans in the lane. Ba oh my gosh, Campbell basketball. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to grab the ball there. Yeah. And poor Evans, I mean, in the basket and out the ball goes. For a shooter who scores at 17 a night, third best in this league, it's just not much cooking. She's 4 of 15. Down low to McNamara Clement. The post has been quiet for Campbell today. Saranya one on one, kept her pivot foot and misses it. I'll give Evans credit, great Evans credit, great defense as well on Saranya. Yeah, some good defense going on by both those gals. It's a battle, I tell you, it is a battle. Just watch them. Who is going to get the offense, however? Corpening's been a big story. She's got seven. Tooley the steal. Tooley still moving. Price the three. Campbell is five of 17 from deep. Asheville slowing it down, taking a little time here. Asheville wants to get a 10th conference win and avoid a six seed. Totally, they really lost it. Look at the hands of Serrano on that pass that time. Right back to her, taking her time. Totally's got it. A little momentum shift here now towards the Campbells. Give her five points in this fourth quarter after a, after a slow start. Now can Asheville respond? Look at this space for Corpening. They've lived on these ball screens all night. Evans on the switch. No good. Saranyu has space.
Could be a race to 50 tonight. Getting close. McNamara Clement out to Price. Needs this three. And you can tell she has not been able to find confidence. 0-5 from the field. Carver the steal. Look it up. Drives herself. Lobs to Thule. Bucket is short. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Campbell loved that back. <laughs> Ooh. Four-point game, 3.45 to go. Legs are exhausted. Final game you, of the regular season. You got to feel like the legs are taking a toll on both teams now. Lewis, where's she going to go? Good option in Carter. Three-pointer is short. Asheville's had a couple chances to put this game away. Everything's short by everybody. Serrano. Oh. Rebound McNamara Clement. And a timeout, a wise one for Ronnie Fisher. Yeah. And Wanda, what is Ronnie saying here to get his team, I guess, to take a deep breath and keep playing? Absolutely. Just gather yourselves. You know, this is a good possession for us. Lauren fought to get that second opportunity for us. Now let's go out here now and let's execute. We got to go three minutes and a half here. We want to bear down now. Got to grin and bear it a little and get over the hump. Campbell has forced four turnovers in these last three minutes to stay in the ball game. Big reason why he's been their defense keeping a minute. Yep, it really has. Here we see Tooley coming out in clutch on that double pump and knocking a big bucket in for Campbell here. That was her first three and desperately needed. Every possession important now, down the stretch. Four point game nearing the three minute mark. This is what you practice, this is what you work on. Can you practice fatigue? That's a huge question. Yeah, you gotta just practice mental toughness and you do. Drea that. Anderson off the bench, no. I like that insertion for Faith Price bringing in a hot shooter. Deary Evans up to a left. Stouner stroke here in the second half. Wilson is dangerous. No numbers. She's going to slow it down. Asheville hasn't scored in five minutes. McNamara Clement gets a foul and a trip to the free throw line. Good to see McNamara Clement get a little grid in her there going to the basket. A little extra ump. You talk about time. the exhaustion. These girls are ready to pass out on the court, get a pizza, watch some Netflix, and get ready for the playoffs on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. They're not, Evan. They said, we got two and a half minutes left here to play. We're going to play for our lives. Both teams, I'm sure, are saying that to themselves right now. By the way, Coach, you got to watch Lucifer. Great show on Netflix. It's a three-point game. Lucifer. The devil comes back to life. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm not sure I want to see that one. It's not as cryptic as it would seem. It's just Faith Price to check in. <laughs> I bet these teams feel like they're in the underworld right now trying to get their offenses going. Rebound, Thule. Back hey. up with it. No. Trip drill, Anderson. What is going on Ooh. out here? Key offensive rebounds for Campbell if they can convert. Chance to tie it. Here's your shot. Nope. Serrano to the bucket. There you go. Big bucket for Campbell. A 6-0 Campbell run. Yep. Little momentum change like we talked about. It's starting to shift. Two minutes to play. Campbell with a win earns the number two seed. Asheville gets a top five berth. Evans to her spot. There you go. This one's going to the wire, Evan. You mentioned Adiri Evans, coach. She's up to 13 points. Tooley draws space and a bit strong. Asheville going to time on this possession, I'm sure. Look for a good shot, milk some clock. First team to 50 wins. It's the Bowie's Creek Long. <laughs> they want it in the hands of Evans. Third leading scorer in the Big South has been swarmed all night, and she's fouled. McNamara Clement sends her to the free throw line. I believe she missed her last one. We'll see what happens here. We know ordinarily she's a very good free throw shooter. 
Okay, Price subs in for Anderson. And yet, if you're Ronnie Fisher, got to find a way to produce here. Don't necessarily need a three, but it's been their best option tonight. Evans makes it a four-point game. Adiri is an excellent free throw shooter, 72%. More free throw attempts than any player in this conference for reasons just like that. Yep, our point total is moving on up too, isn't it, Evan? That's 15 now. Give her 15. Give her a five-point lead as well, stopping a Campbell 6-0 run. Serrano tried to get too creative and a kick ball on Wilson because she's got to shoot it. I'm not following you, Evan. I'm saying I think Lou's got to shoot that ball oh, and not yeah, try to pass yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got a hot hand for Campbell. That's a play Ronnie Fisher would want to see score it. Tooley's up to eight all in this fourth quarter with some contact. Oh. Tooley stops the run. Like I said, Evan, these kids are a long ways from thinking about Netflix yet. <laughs> we got a thriller here. ESPN Plus, thanks for sticking around. Final minute. And Tooley can make it a two-point game. You almost wonder if she's better off missing it the way Campbell's been rebounding. Yeah, the offensive rebounds have really made a difference for Campbell. There's extra points. One minute to go. Talk about big possessions. Could be a playoff preview tonight, and we're in for a dandy. Wonder where the ball's going to end up. Want to take a big guess? Nadiria Evans, <laughs> up to 15 points. Corpening with 10. Now Evans. A carry. Turnover UNC Asheville in the crucial moment. Wow. <laughs> so if you're Ronnie Fisher, here's getting the basketball late. I want to tell you, you got to feel like Tooley or Saranya both have a good hot hand for Campbell. Both are clutch. That'd be my guess. Asheville led by eight midway through the third. Campbell has come back, now a chance to tie. One foul from the bonus as well. Well, both those players getting a lot of pressure. Timeout, Ronnie Fisher. Campbell is without Taya Bolden tonight. Brittany Staves both injured midway through this game. Christabel Izuma injured in the pregame, a beaten and battered team, and now a chance to tie it or take the lead. Still hanging. Still hanging. Anything can happen. I tell you, it's been fun for me watching over the years late game situations and Ronnie Fisher's ability to pull late game situations off. He's drawing up one over there right now. There's a good option, and Shai Tilly got Campbell right back in it. For sure. Big bucket. Tooley, Serrano. Campbell Both has won right three now. games in the closing seconds, and this will be their most creative finish. Both these teams are exhausted. Final game of the regular season. Tooley goes right to the basket. Clock to eight. Saranya with four is tripped. Count it! Oh, wow! What a competitor! Acrobatic Saranya ties it up. What a competitor. Falling down on the floor shooting it. That wasn't even her attempt. She just flipped it up and it went in. What a shot. What a shot. Campbell in front, timeout, Honey Brown. Campbell beaten, battered, running out of bodies. What must they do defensively now to get the game winning stop? Well, hey, this is, again, this is what you practice and this is what you work on. You got to hold your ground. You want to do a good job of helping with Evans. You know, because you kind of feel like the ball is going to be going her way. 
I tell you, either Evans or Corpening are going to probably get to the basket. I tell you, the whole game changes when you advance the basketball. 13 seconds is a long time, a lot of time to play. Honey Brown told us coming in the biggest key in back-to-backs is the mental health of her players. This team has come out focused, determined. They had a six-point lead late, now trailing. What must they do to get a bucket down the stretch? Well, I'm sure she's over there, like on the last possession with Coach Fisher, and she's drawing up their magical play for them to go out and try to execute to perfection. You got to feel like the ball's probably going to be in Evans' hands, but I like Corpening too. I mean, I think she's done a good job penetrating. And then you got uh, Wilson out on the perimeter if all the defense shifts. So we'll see what happens. Lou Serrano taking over this game, 18 points. Maybe making a statement for an all conference bid come Friday. Right now, though, we got a one point ball game with 13 seconds left. Barn we figured burner. it was a race to 50. Definitely a barn burner. Campbell with the win earns the number two seed in the conference tournament. Asheville with a win can move into the top five. Nadiria Evans gets it started. Both teams with a timeout. Right back to her. It's good. Timeout, Ronnie Fisher, and Asheville's in front. Now they're getting ready to advance the ball, and here we go again, Evan. No surprise there. The hottest scorer for UNC Asheville up to 17 points. So we just mentioned it, here we go again. What do you do if you're Campbell to win this game? Well. You know, they got so many special late game situations. And like I said on the last possession with Asheville, 9.9 .9 seconds is a long time to play. I mean, I've seen Campbell score with like point something off of a sideline inbound play. So lots of time here. And what you want to be talking about if you're Asheville is no second shot opportunities. Make sure you limit second shot opportunities. Get a hand in the face. Everybody block out and limit second shot opportunities. Two lead changes in the closing 30 seconds. Couldn't ask for a better way to end a regular season here in the Big South Conference. A Campbell team, let's face it, out of bodies. Brittany Stage, Taya Bolin, Christabel Izuma all nicked up tonight. It's the fearsome fivesome on the floor against the gritty UNC Asheville Club looking for win number 10 in league play. Always be fearful of the inbounder too. Never forget the inbounder. Once the ball comes in. In the hands of Saranya. Price with two for the win. Yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Left hand and all. How about that? Time on the clock. 0.5 seconds. Faith Price might have just won this ball game. Get another look at that one. Carter draws on Saranya, so she gets beat on the ball there with, and no help coming across that time. Great job by Price. Man, a player who had started this game 0 of 4 shooting. What a moment for Faith Price. The name of the game, you know, making it happen, and boy, did she ever there. So let's turn the tables right back over to Asheville. Five tenths of a second. That is enough time to catch and shoot. Yeah. They've made five three pointers tonight. This game is still up for grabs. Yeah, it's almost got to be an inside, though. I mean, it's almost got to be something thrown over the top and a quick shot taken. So, got to be careful on screens, making sure, you know, you have good communication on screens and. Probably going to see a lot of switching on screens in a situation like this with 0.5 seconds left to play. Asheville has not won in this building in four years. They've done everything right tonight. Now five tenths of a second. They'll add a couple on the clock to 1.2 to decide this basketball game. Oh, yeah, so they're going to have a little more time than we thought with 1.2. Does that change your philosophy of working to the inside? Well, you got time for a catch and a dribble. That's about it. Not much. 
Asheville has dropped three straight. Campbell has won six of seven, two contrasting teams, and they meet up here in the closing seconds. What a game. What a game. Amira Corpening to trigger it in. Lob to Carter. Here it goes. It's oh, out. Wow. Oh. Campbell hangs on 52 51, securing the number two seed in the Big South Conference Tournament with about five healthy bodies they had left. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Good win for Campbell. Heart breaks for a team like Asheville, though. That was great execution down the end. That's all you can hope for to get a shot like that. Does that not tell the story? Emotions, hugs, girls yeah. walking off the court in Uggs Wounded in and battle. Crocs. Wounded in battle, carrying the players off the floor. How about that? Whatever they got left, this game came down to every moment. We got to show you the Hercules play of the game because there were so many moments in the closing seconds. And how about you here? I definitely had to be. Wow, what a drive by Faith. Game on the line, and the girl who had not scored all night switches hands for the win. Key element, though, because the play before, Saranya had driven and made the three-point play. So she drew all the defense. Price's girl goes to Saranya. Price takes advantage and goes to the basket. For Wanda Watkins, I'm Evan Budrovich signing off from Gore Arena. Campbell gets its 52-51 victory. This game had it all, a race to 50 and a closing buzzer beater. Good night, and we'll see you in the Big South Conference Tournament.